Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 38. It's on motion, which is movement of objects over time. And so to kind of apply this in this video, I wanted to make some motion. So I've got a tennis ball here right next to a meter stick and I drop the tennis ball. You can see that it seems like it's speeding up over time, but it's too hard to tell. And so what I then did is slow down the video. And so now this is in slow motion. You can see I've marked some of the big points every 10 centimeters on that meter stick. And so you can see it looks like it's speeding up, but it's still really hard to tell, um, make any measurements of that. And so what I did, what Galileo did, I started using inclined planes. And so now I've got that same tennis ball, but it's on an inclined plane and I'm viewing this from above. I slow it down even more and I also filmed a stopwatch in slow motion so that the times are gonna sync up between the two. And so as I let go of this tennis ball, you can see that it takes around a half a second to make the first 10 centimeters, uh, but then it seems to to speed up. As you get down to the bottom, it seems like it's kind of staying at a specific rate when we get down to the bottom. And so now I can take those numbers and, and start to observe the motion. Now some terms, if you were to just ask somebody, what's that tennis ball doing? You could say it starts at position zero, maybe it moves a certain distance, and then it's speeding up over time. Now those terms, position, distance, the speed, those are all scalar terms. And so in physics, what we try to use, because direction is important, is we try to use vector values. And so instead of saying distance, get in the habit of saying displacement. Instead of speed, we use velocity velocity, not only the quantity, the speed, but also the direction in which that speed is. And then finally, the change in that velocity over time is going to be acceleration. And so if you take an object like this, and we're going to move it from the left side to the right side, so just get an idea of what's happening to that object over time. And I'll mark a, a, a second position along the way. So you can see that that object is speeding up and then it seemed like it slowed down. But I'm most interested in that first part of the motion of that object. So I marked position one and position two. And so what do we call the distance between those two? We call that the displacement, how far it's going. But it's also in which direction is it going? In this case, it's going from the left to the right. So we could say that's a positive displacement. Um, if we take the displacement and divide it by time, in other words, how much time does it take you to do that displacement? Now we've got another vector value, which is called the velocity velocity, how fast it's moving and in what direction. Now what do we call it when we measure the amount of velocity change over time? That's going to be acceleration. And so that's also going to be a vector value. And so there's really some cool graphing that you can do to go from a displacement versus time to a velocity versus time and finally to an acceleration versus time. So let's get to that. I've got some data here again. It's starting at position zero at time zero, and then I just recorded, and I kind of had to slow down the video, where it was at each of these different positions. And so if you wanted to, you could kind of take this video and you could play it and start doing the graphing on your own if you wanted to. This is the data that I got. So I've got time on the left side and then I've got my position on the right side, which is consistently going up by 0.1 meter every time. But the time is varying again. It takes, you know, about a half a second to make it to the first 10 centimeters, but the whole thing takes one and a half seconds. So it's clearly accelerating over time. A great way to look at this graphically is to then graph it, obviously. And so I put time along the bottom and then I I've got the position over time. Uh, and so I'm graphing that and we could even make a best fit curve that kind of fits with the data. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's not a bad data set. Uh, it looks pretty good. And so what's some, what are some things that you can tell right away? If, you, if I were to say, give me the story of this motion, you would say that it's moving in the positive. Its position is getting greater in a greater uh, time. But also it seems like its velocity is increasing. It seems like it's speeding up over time. Now, what you can do is you can go from a position versus time graph like this. And if you graph the slope, since that is um, how much it's moving over a given period of time, then you get the velocity of that. And so I tell my students to use the magic pencil. And what you do there is you just move your pencil along that line and the angle of that pencil. And what I mean by the angle is the slope of that pencil tells you the velocity on a position versus time graph. And so since it's flat, since my pencil is flat, it's going to have a velocity when it starts of zero and, and the tennis ball wasn't moving to begin with. I'm now going to move it up to the next checkpoint and you can see I'm trying to move my pencil so it's tangent to that line. What I mean is is that it's um, if you were to imagine a circle it's a line that would just touch that circle in one point. And you can see now that since the pencil is, is 
up. In other words, since it's got a slope that's in a positive value, we know that it has a positive velocity. If we go to the next checkpoint, you can see there's a higher slope there, and so that means the velocity is increasing. And the velocity increases and increases and increases and increases. So what you really want to look for here is we're looking at just the slope of the pencil. Don't, don't kind of measure that we're getting higher on the graph itself. Just look at the slope of the pencil, and you can see that eventually it levels off. What does that tell me? The velocity eventually hits a maximum where it's not really going much faster than that. And so what I can do is I could also measure that by calculating the slope at each of those lines. So mathematically I could find its velocity. And so at the beginning the rise over the run is zero meters per second. In other words it's not going anywhere. If I put a line right at position um, 0.1 meters, we can see that that's got a slope of about 0.35 meters per second. How do you do that? Well, I find my rise of this line, which is going to be 0.5 meters, over the run, which is going to be around 1.4 seconds, and so I get 0.35 meters per second. If I add my next tangent line up here, it's around 0.5. If I go all the way up to one second, I get a slope of around 0.95 meters per second. So what does that mean? It means that the, the ball was speeding up, and it eventually had a velocity velocity of 0.95 meters per second. But you can see as we look up here in these points up here, it's really not speeding up. The velocity is not increasing over time, so we have a constant velocity during that time. So imagine if we were to take that data and now construct another graph a velocity versus time graph, well, it would look something like this, where we started with a velocity of zero, and then that velocity increased till we got a velocity of around 0.95. And so if I were to use my pencil on this one, in other words, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is gonna give you the acceleration. And so if we look at the bottom, it's got a slope in the positive. That means it's accelerating towards the right or accelerating down if we're looking at the video. And you can see that as I graph it through there, it's not not changing, so the slope is not changing. That means it has constant acceleration during that time. And then what happens to the slope is it eventually levels off. Now it doesn't mean that it's not moving anymore. It means that it's not accelerating anymore. It eventually reaches that constant uh, velocity and so the acceleration goes to zero. Now all of this works depending upon the frame of reference. In other words, I had to have the camera sitting back and we were viewing it from afar. If the camera would have, for example, traveled with the ball, none of this would make sense. And so I got a lab assistant to help me show you what the frame of reference is. So he's gonna constantly be driving his car over and over and over again, but I'm gonna choose the frame of reference. And so he's moving, in this case, from right to left, and the camera is stuck in this position. Now I'm moving the camera with him as he moves, and so it doesn't look like he's really accelerating. Now I'm moving the camera in the opposite direction, and so it looks like he's going really, really fast. Now I'm going to move it behind, and it looks like we're not seeing much change in motion, or if I put it above, it seems like it's moving from right to left. And so all of these things, like displacement, velocity, acceleration, are dependent upon the frame of reference that you have. And so did you learn to express motion of an object using narrative, like this is speeding up, it has a higher velocity, mathematically, so we did that using just calculation of the slope, or graphically, and then finally, Finally, did you learn to design an experiment to test the motion of an object? And so you could use video like this, you could use a ticker tape or a motion sensor, but what you're really looking at is the change in the position over time, which gives you displacement, therefore velocity, and finally acceleration over time, and I hope that was helpful.